Welcome back to my channel. I am here to do my first Halloween makeup tutorial. I am so excited to do this for you guys. I know Halloween makeup looks can be super, super intimidating. I wanted to do things that you guys can follow along and do to whatever degree you want to and achieve a really cool, unique makeup look. So without further ado, let's just get started. So I'm starting off with a Stila One Step Nourishing Primer. Then I'm going in with the Smashbox pore minimizing mattifying primer stick as always i'll have all the links in the info box down below for all the stuff i used but i'm basically just priming and prepping the skin to make sure we have a really even canvas to work with so next i'm going in with a bunch of liquid illuminators because i wanted to create a super radiant base for my makeup the first one i went in with was from becca it was the liquid illuminator in opal and then i went in with two cover fx liquid illuminator drops in the colors sunset and candlelight i believe i'm not positive but i will leave a list of all the products i used and their exact names in the info box down below for you guys I wanted my skin for this tutorial to kind of look like a bronzed or metal statue, almost representing the sarcophagus of a pharaoh mummy. And so I wanted to put down all these radiance layers to induce that visual. But if I'm keeping it 100% with you guys, all these liquid illuminators, probably not super necessary. I achieved that metal statue look more with the powder illuminators that I end up using rather than the liquid ones, but I wanted to leave these clips in there so that you guys knew the exact process. Using the illuminating matchstick in the shade Blonde from Fenty Beauty, I applied that liberally all over my face because I really wanted my skin to look like true gold metal and so I wanted a yellow tone to my skin which this definitely gave me. I also started out using brushes for all these liquid illuminators but pro tip use your fingers because the brushes were being super annoying to work with. They were causing a lot of streakiness and unevenness and my fingers were just allowing me to have a lot more control over the product and blend it out a lot more evenly and quicker for sure. I applied that to my shoulders and neck also because they were exposed and I wanted whatever skin you could see to look like the same gold metal. I went in with the Fenty Beauty Foundation in the shade 290 and using the Fenty Beauty Foundation brush, I just applied that all over my face. I wanted something that was going to be pretty much medium to full coverage, but also super long wearing. Long wearing is just going to be great if you do this look or any look for any event because it's going to be on the whole time you want it to be on, but I wanted a really flawless airbrushed looking canvas just so that whenever we used all the more metallic colors it would sit really nicely on the skin. I also popped this on my ears and then I just added a little extra coverage onto a couple areas where I felt like my natural redness was peeking through. Then I went in with my Tarte Shape Tape Concealer and just did some light concealing. Nothing too crazy because I knew that there was going to be a lot of other stuff going on so just to brighten and bring some of the natural contours back. And then I just took my damp beauty blender and also bounced that all over my face really lightly to pick up any excess foundation that may have been sitting so that the foundation was really well blended into the skin. Then taking my Charlotte Tilbury finishing powder, I popped that underneath my eyes to set my concealer. I used the Fenty Beauty Matchstick in the shade Mocha to create a cream contour. So just kind of stripe my face with it and then use my beauty blender to blend it out. For this look, I wanted a little bit of a more intense contour, um, just for a more striking angular look. And then what I decided to do was to take my beauty blender and rub the product onto that because I felt like it just gave me more control rather than striping the product directly onto my face. And don't forget that jawline because the double chin is always lurking. And then I felt like the contour had kind of rubbed off some of the coverage on my cheeks. 
and so I just popped on a little bit more of the foundation on those areas. This is also a great way if you feel like you've put too much contour on to kind of lessen a cream contour. And then to really get that contour cutting, I took foundation and carved out my contour, kind of like reverse contouring to make sure it was a really sharp angle. So unfortunately, my camera stopped recording for the next step, but basically all I did was set my whole face with the Charlotte Tilbury setting powder, and then I took this Lorac contour kit and a dose of colors brush and started to just carve out my cheekbones and set the contour areas with the medium contour shade. Something about it just didn't work and it came out super, super patchy. I have a feeling my makeup was just really kind of thick at that point because I had so many liquid illuminators sitting underneath my foundation. So I just spent a little time trying to to add contour with different brushes, blend it out, and then you'll see what I did to kind of correct it. Then I went in with this fan brush. Thank goodness I wanted a strong one for this look, but just adding that contour in. Then I went in with the Omega bronzer from Marc Jacobs and a Kat Von D powder brush and just started bronzing up the skin. I wanted to add a lot more warmth than I usually wear to the skin and I also use this kind of to blend out the contour and make it look a little less harsh. And then using this Sigma brush, which is just denser and more angled, I used the same bronzer and really just went to town. And then don't forget your neck and any exposed skin. Using this Makeup Forever powder foundation, I'm just buffing all of this out with the Makeup Forever brush. Then I took this Tarte brush with the Makeup Forever foundation and just did some more reverse contouring to really carve out the contour and make it just look sharp. Using Topaz from Jouer, I went in with a Real Techniques brush and just highlighted and blended it out. I love these Jouer highlighters. So bringing that around the temple area above my brow bone and then I went in with a Sigma brush and the light contour shade from the Lorac palette and contoured out my nose. And then to blend it out and kind of soften up the contour, I used my Beauty Blender with no extra product and just bounced it on the skin and then bounced it over all the areas where I had applied highlighter and bronzer as well to reduce that powdery look. Then I took this Makeup Geek contour shade and I started in with the eyes, creating a crease. I just used browns on the crease because I wanted to create a shadow since the eye look I was going for was super intense. So I'm just really taking my time and working that in. Again, the exact shade names will be in the info box down below. So I'm going in with the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil in the shade number three and I'm gonna fill in my brows. This step also may seem a little bit redundant considering that I'm going in with a much darker product on my brow coming up, but this was actually amazing to do because the pencil really laid down a great foundation for the super dark color I ended up using. It was really easy to work with the dark color. There was very minimal fallout. Just going in, filling in my brows and making them a little bit bolder than I usually do, but not completely solid front to tail. Now I'm taking this black shade from a Melt Cosmetics eyeshadow stack and I'm just using an angled MAC eyeliner brush actually to fill in my brows. And this is what I was saying, that brow pencil kind of acted almost like a primer or a glue for the powder. So the powder really stuck well, it was super pigmented, it went on pretty evenly and it also didn't let the powder fall out onto my face, which is amazing. I created a gradient still where the front was a little bit lighter than the tail and the front is still a little feathered so you can kind of see hairs in the front and I wanted that look. I didn't want it to just be a thick line start to finish. I just really like the way that more natural top looked because the rest of the makeup ends up being super, super intense. Now I'm just taking concealer onto a flat concealer brush and kind of carving out the bottom of my brow. I wanted to do this just to make sure that the bottom of my brow looked really, really sharp and clean. So now I'm taking that same eyeliner brush with the same dark matter powder and I'm starting to create the shape 
of the brow look that I'm going for. Um, so I'm making sure that both sides are even. So I'm doing this very slowly and starting off with very minimal amount of product on my brush just because if it's a fainter line, it's easier to correct. So then I'm going in with a thicker brush and with the same black powder, now I'm slowly just starting to build up that pointed angular shape and also start doing some shading because I wanted it to shade out into my natural skin tone from that black color. So now I'm just feathering out the product using sideways strokes with the eyeliner brush and you can see the product is slowly making its way out from that initial line which is what I wanted to do. It was kind of what shaped the whole look and also if this was uneven it would make both sides of my face look super uneven so I wanted to make sure the points were straight, the shading was even, and I kept going back in with my little concealer brush to sharpen up the lines and even everything out. So just take your time, make sure that everything is even. It doesn't need to be super shaded, it can be all opaque, but even is key just to make it look really clean. So going back and forth between the eyeliner brush and the smudger brush and just shading out that shape. This is another contour shade from Makeup Geek and I'm applying that into the crease just to deepen it up because the brow is so strong so I wanted to make sure that it didn't outdo the rest of my eye. Focusing on the inner corner and then winging out the outer corner. Next I went in with my Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Eye Crayon in the shade Blacker and I started creating my wing. So I basically just created a line, took a tiny little smudger brush and smudged it out and I kept doing this back and forth to both eyes until I got the shape and the thickness that I wanted. Now my eyes are different shapes. That means when I'm doing eyeliner, my eyeliner, if you look at the thickness of both of them, isn't usually even, but in order for my eyeliner to look even when you're looking at me head on, I need to do that just so that it can create symmetry. I have one hooded eye, which is my left eye, and then my right eye has more lid space, but that's how you solve the issue of different shaped eyes, and it's just what you gotta do to make sure it looks even on both sides. Now I'm taking the smudger brush with the dark matter black eyeshadow and popping that onto the liner. Start building up the rest of the liner with your shadow. I feel like shadow is a great way to create eyeliner because you have more control and that smudged out look is really pretty and makes it look a little more effortless and it's a lot easier to create a super even winged liner on both sides. So I'm just using this tiny little smudger brush from IT Cosmetics and just going back and forth between my smudger brushes and my eyes. I focused on the liner on the lid space first before I got to the wing and I wanted to bring my liner almost up to the crease because I wanted that thick liner look but I liked how it looked diffused because it was a little softer, a little more wearable, something a little more different from what you may normally think of when you think pharaoh, Cleopatra type of look. Again, I'm using my concealer on my concealer brush to really clean up and shape the wings. And then same thing, just placing powder down, blending it out, placing it down, blending it out until you're happy. It definitely can be time consuming, but it's not tedious. It's great because you really are completely in control of the product and the shape you're getting. And so if you have the time, give it a shot, not just for this tutorial, but for like life in general. I am taking M100 from Makeup Forever, which is just the Makeup Forever matte black shadow because I felt like the melt one wasn't as dark and inky as I wanted it. So using the Makeup Forever one on the same Sephora smudger brush, I'm just building up the eyeliner and then I'm also going into the brow as well. And then just blending and blending and blending so that everything just looks super super seamless and then using my elf 
little brush. I'm wiping away any mild fallout and then fixing up some last minute details on the eyeliner. I'm going back in with the Marc Jacobs eyeliner and just lining right near my lash line so that it's super, super dark at my lash line so that this look can be as intense as possible. Then I'm going in with the Sephora Cream Eyeshadow Crayon in the shade My Boyfriend's Jeans and lining my waterline with this. This stuff is insane. It's so pigmented and such a beautiful color and really long wearing. And then I'm taking an cosmetic smudger brush and smudging that line out. And then I'm taking the eyeshadow underneath my lash line and starting to smoke my lower lash line out with that blue shade and then taking the It Cosmetics brush and smudging that out as well. Then going in with this Makeup Geek shade, I am setting that color just so that it's super intense and also long wearing. Then I'm taking a turquoise ColourPop shade and popping that right over what I've already done to brighten the color and also add a little bit more of a touch of that tealy turquoise shade to the super intense cobalt blue because that was the type of blue that I was looking to achieve. As I'm blending out the blues, kind of attaching the lower lash line to my wing so that everything looks like one unit. And then I'm taking a little bit larger of a fluffy blending brush and just blending the edges out so that it looks a little softer and not just like a stripe. So using that same blending brush, I'm just taking a combination of those blue eyeshadows and pumping it onto my brow wing, I guess we can call it. But I want the black to kind of fade into a little bit of that hint of blue, just really subtle. And then I went in with concealer on the inner corner of my brow wing and just sharpened up the blue as well so that it was a little more distinct from my actual lid. Now I'm going in with the Urban Decay Heavy Metal Glitter Liner in Midnight Cowboy and I'm creating geometric tiers. So it's pretty much just a upside down triangle going down from my lower lash line onto the apples of my cheeks and I'm just checking to make sure as I'm doing both sides of my face that both eyes are even as always. If you feel like you get this glitter out of the lines, you can wait until it dries and then take a spoolie or you can take your nails even and just kind of flick it away once it's dried. So now I'm going in with this Mehron Gold Pigment and I'm dusting this all over my face with a really fluffy MAC brush. So earlier when I was talking about the liquid illuminators and I said that it wasn't super necessary to put them down for that metal gold skin finish, it was primarily because of this product. So by liberally applying this all over my face and really blending it in, I'm able to achieve the look of having metal bronzed skin more so than the liquid illuminators did for me. So I'm taking a little bit of the same powder and popping it on as a brow bone highlight. Now I'm taking this gold water induced pigment and popping this onto my lips. And then I'm going in with blonde from Fenty and popping that onto the lips and then the Mehron gold pigment right on top. So I'm taking the same Marc Jacobs Highliner Gel Eye Crayon and just creating a black stripe right in the center of my lower lip. And I just took my time to make sure that it was even as well. Then I am taking the same eyeliner and creating black dots going down from the black stripe onto my chin, as well as three on the tail of my brow bone. Taking the same paint, I am popping some of that onto the tear area just to make it a little more vibrant. So now I'm taking this Laura Mercier liquid pen liner and just going over the black lip to make it really opaque. Using the same pen liner, I'm creating this symbol on my right eye. This was a symbol after doing some research that I found was really common on hieroglyphics and on the tombs of pharaohs, so I wanted to pop that on there as well. And then using a liner brush, I'm just taking some black shadow and defining that symbol and just sharpening up that curve at the end. 
I took the Urban Decay Glitter Liner and popped that onto my upper lip also just for a little bit of extra wabam. And then taking the paint, I put that on my ears because I thought it would look cool and I think it did. I'm also popping that onto the highest parts of my cheekbones and down the center of my nose after setting my face with my Makeup Forever Mist and Fix setting spray. Then I'm going in with my Fenty Beauty Trophy Wife and popping that onto all the same spots and I'm being way more liberal with Trophy Wife. I love the combination of these two products though because it really added a yellow tone to my skin which is what I was looking for to give me that gold metal effect where when the light hit it, it kind of looked like my entire face was that color which was cool. I went ahead and popped false lashes and mascara on and I'll leave the details of everything I used down below. So then I took these black gems I got from Michaels and my Esquito Companion Lash Glue and popped these gems onto all the areas where I had placed black dots on my face. The reason I did this was because I had done a lot of research and pharaohs and also just extremely wealthy men were always depicted on their tombs having beards and it was a sign for a lot of different things but one of them included holiness. Um, some of the places I looked also said it was a sign of like wealth and status so I wanted to definitely have that look because that's what I was going for was kind of a tomb effect and I wanted to do it in a little bit more of a feminine way and also not exactly the same way because I didn't want to be disrespectful to what the actual tradition was. Just wanted to throw that out there because there was a reason for it and I also don't want to be disrespectful to anybody so disclaimer and it looks really cool. So, still wearing clothes, people, but I just took the straps of my tank top down and went on to paint my exposed neck, chest, and shoulder area. This part, as with any other part of this tutorial, is totally, totally optional. And then I took the Mayron pigment and popped that all over my shoulders, my neck, my chest. And then I took Trophy Wife, of course, and really just went to town. That was really my dream when I got Trophy Wife was to bathe my body in the powder and sure enough I achieved it. And then I popped on a little gold choker and then I took the paint and just added little detailing to my hands and the tops of my hands and it looked so cool because I was really trying to go for that metal statue look which I think all these little details definitely helped achieve. And then I set all of that with Trophy Wife of course. And then I took the ColourPop shadow and just went back in under the eyes and intensified that area. Taking this Bite Beauty lip gloss, I put that on my upper lip and this here is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had such a blast creating it for you guys. So leave a comment down below for me and let me know what you guys thought about this video, please. Thank you as always so much for tuning in and I will catch you guys soon. Bye guys.